Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Now here along with Dr. Bonatti, your host, Kimberly Burmell. Thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Burmell with our friend and executive radio producer, Ethan Euchre. Always happy to be here. And our other friend, to my right, we have senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Absolutely ecstatic to be here. <laughs> and across from me, that gentleman over there in the purple sweater is world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti of the Benatti Spine Institute. No friend at all. Oh, you're he everybody's friend. A, an absolute friend you're of the show. I think that goes world. without saying. It's your yeah. show. We're just living okay, in your okay, world. Okay, okay, okay. Like and it should go say, we talk about Dr. Benatti as being this incredible surgeon, mm-hmm. which he is. He is. He is. But he's also a great guy. He's a wonderful man. Uh-huh. He's a yes. wonderful human being. One day they're going to erect a statue of you. Uh, and no, rate, no race on salaries, guys. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. darn it. I retract my last statement. <laughs> I still love it. But, but all joking aside, that gentleman changed spine surgery forever. <laughs> and, you know, we hear so many things because nearly half the Benatti Spine Institute's patients before coming to us have had failed back surgery elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we see a cut. The people were given injections, but the actual surgery had not been done by these other facilities. So you need to be real careful out there. When you hear minimally invasive surgeries, it do not equate it with just the Bonatti spine procedures. When he first started, it was new and it was innovative and it was minimal in comparison to traditional spine surgery, but that has changed. His approach is targeted and it's personalized um, surgery. The Bonatti spine procedures are patented. They're exclusive to Dr. Bonatti and the Bonatti Spine Institute, as well as the tools that help him perform it. And let me just also make this other distinction. Some talk about laser, and laser is the only tool. It's one of many. Mm -hmm. And if you only use laser, you're going to have a problem. Um, Dr. Bonatti saw the bad results of traditional open spine surgery, and he actually took himself out of spine surgery for a while because he was so upset and disheartened by what he saw. Um, So he joined and he became one of the first in, what was it, arthroscopy at Wake Forest University? Yeah. One of the first to go through those studies and started off on the knee and then the shoulder and then the wrist and the elbow and all the other joints. And he's also one of the only ones that actually thinks the spine is like a joint. I've heard you mention that to me, and I thought that was impressive because I don't think a lot of other surgeons think that way. Not only are you trained as an orthopedic surgeon, but you also have some neurosurgery training as well. And you don't tend to look at people and just go, oh, it's only spine. He takes a look at the person, the human being. And what we hear week after week is the patients are so desperate, some contemplating suicide, and they're looking for help. And instead, the doctors that they're seeking out, as much as the person wants to maintain hope, the doctors are giving up hope for them. So something I'm very passionate about, I know it's something Dr. Benatti is passionate about, that you can find real relief at the Benatti Spine Institute. They have 98.75% patient reported success. With that being said, we have a jam-packed show. We have Wendy Kelly. She's going to be in studio with us. She's the founder of Positive Life Foundation, a nonprofit organization here in Pinellas Park that trains rescue dogs to sniff out cancer. So this is so important. It's a very uh, personal story as well, which Mm -hmm. we'll get into of she course, has a book. But yeah, she has a book mm-hmm. out. It's a dog that she had who actually detected cancer in her, mm-hmm. and sort of it's it's a, it's an amazing story. Amazing story. You'll have to stay tuned. Mm-hmm. Dr. Gerard Mullen, leading gastroenterologist and associate professor of medicine at Johns Hopkins University, and author of the Gut Balance Revolution. So boost your metabolism, restore your inner ecology, and lose the weight for good. Can't wait to hear about that one. Mm-hmm. And then of course we'll hear what's new in American medicine today. But up first in. Today- Today's Back to Life segment, we will talk to a patient of the Bonatti Spine Institute who went from living a life that was restricted by pain and discomfort through their journey of finding the Bonatti Spine Institute and are now living pain-free. Well, it is my pleasure to introduce Torlene Dodd, who is calling in from Arkansas. Thank you very much. (laughs) Well, you... um, you have an amazing story and a bit accident prone. I'm going to preface your story by that, but why don't you start at the beginning and kind of walk us through how you came to be in pain? Okay, I'd be glad to. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to share what Dr. Bonatti and his team has done for me. 
Uh, my story's kind of long, but I'll try to That's make okay. it as short as I can. Sure. Um, even though I graduated from college and taught school, my life's dream was to be a full-time mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I was nine years old, I fell, and I twisted a place in my back, and the doctors just told me, sorry, there's nothing we can do for you. Um, we'll give you pain pills and muscle relaxers, and you'll have to take it easy for the rest of your life. Oh. Well, that's not a good option for nine-year-old and child. Nine years old. Right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But that's all they told me. So the, for, for 10 years, I had no relief from the pain in my back until I finally went to a chiropractor, and I got some help. Okay. Well, after, as the years went by, he kept me going, and um, I had got married. I had two children. Well, in between my two children, I had ruptured my... Uh, my L5-S1 is what they told me later, and I was in a lot of pain, and when my son got to be a year old, the pain was so horrific that I would lay there in bed and just beg God to let me die because wow. I hurt so mm-hmm. bad, and I couldn't even wipe spilled milk up off of the table. I couldn't drive my kids to school. By the time I would get there, I would have to get out and stand up because I couldn't sit down. The pain was horrible. It was just horrible. Well, I had a regular traditional back surgery at that time. This was back in 1995, and it was a nightmare for a young mother because I couldn't pick my son up. I couldn't change his diaper. I couldn't drive my kids to school. I couldn't even start physical therapy for six weeks. I mean, all of this, we had to totally rearrange our schedule and farm my children out to my mother who left two hours away just to try to make arrangements for the surgery and for the follow-up afterwards. So after this, what the surgery consisted of was they just sucked all the inside disc material out of my disc, and they just left this empty sac. Well, that created stenosis. So I still had a lot of pain. I had to be really careful what I did. Just, you know, vacuuming and trying to keep the house clean was just really difficult. But I, I did it. But at least the surgery got the pain that was going down my legs taken care of, and, but I still had a lot of pain in my back. Okay. Well, shortly after 9-11, I got hit by a drunk driver. And so I had all this horrible pain all over again, spreading down my legs. The doctors put me through physical therapy, shots, and they told me there was nothing they could do for me. I, they would write me all the pain pill prescriptions I wanted for the rest of my life and told me to go mm-hmm. apply for disability. Mm-hmm. And I said, no way. I said, I have children to take care of, and if I do that, I'm just as much a hazard on the highway as the drunk driver who hit me, and I am not going to do that. Right. So I just kept the faith and kept believing that God was going to provide an answer for me somewhere. And my chiropractor finally remembered hearing about Dr. Benatti, and he told me about him, so I went looking for him. He wasn't really sure where he was. He just remembered that the name was something like Benatti or something. So I went looking and trying to find him. Well, I couldn't believe my eyes when I opened up the Sunday paper and saw an advertisement for a <laughs> seminar, and it was Dr. Bonatti's, and the Bonatti Institute was coming to my hometown. Wow. So I took my MRIs, I went down there, and Dr. Hershauer reassured me that Dr. Bonatti could help me. Right. So we made arrangements to take my family to Florida that summer and uh, go see Dr. Bonatti and see what he had to say, because my husband just wasn't sure, because we had been told there was nothing they could do for me from mm-hmm. several doctors. Right. So... We went to Florida. We saw Dr. Bernardi. got to meet him. He's a wonderful man, and he really was positive that he could help me. So we went back home, made arrangements for me to come back during Christmas break, and I had my first procedures. And let me tell you, when I had the very first surgery that he, on the ruptured disc that I had then, I was able to get in a car within 24 hours after the anesthesia wore off and drive I drove for over an hour, and this time I was crying because I could actually drive and not be in pain. Wow. And before, I would be in the car for 30 seconds, and I'd be crying because I hurt so bad. So I was thrilled. I could actually drive a car again without hurting. Yeah. So it was just absolutely amazing. So um, I went in, and I had three total surgeries then. I came back the next summer and had three more. Okay. So I was doing great. I had no pain pills. Uh, as long as I stayed within my limits, I had no pain. But then in 2009, I got hit again. Oh, man. <laughs> so I had a second wreck, and I had all this horrible pain going down my legs again. I was miserable. I went to my chiropractor for a couple months, and he said, don't waste your time. He said, you're obviously going to have to have surgery again. Don't even waste your time with the doctors around here. He said, you need to go straight to Dr. Bonatti. Right. So Smart I man. called and asked him. I said, can he even work in the same areas? And I was really afraid that they couldn't work on the same areas and that I couldn't get the same results that I had gotten before. But they said, come on down, let's take a look at you. So I did, 
And I went and I had three procedures on my neck and six more on my lower back. And I'm doing great as long as I stay within my limits. I'm pain-free and drug-free. And I thank God every day for the knowledge that he placed in Dr. Bonatti to help people like me and everyone else that that goes to the Bonatti Institute. And I just want to say, Dr. Bonatti, thank you so much because my life was given back to me three times now, (laughs) two times because of you. And I just want to say thank you so much that I have the ability to walk and do things. I thought my life was going to wind up being in a wheelchair, on, in pain for the rest of my life. That's what I thought I was going to wind up being, and I am not in any of those. So I just thank you. I thank you, Dr. Bernardi, and I thank God every day for you, and I pray for you all the time. Thank you. Thank you, beautiful. You're making me emotional. Everybody's teary-eyed uh, in here, Charlene. We can hear the passion well, in your you, voice. <laughs> um, it is emotional because if, when you think your life is gone, you think your life is over, and if you think all you have to look forward to is pain that is so bad that all you want to do is die, I know what that feels like. I've been there three times now. Wow. I know what pain is, and I can. And there is an answer. You just got to. You can't give up. You got to look, and you got to be willing to try. I, of course, had people say, "Oh, you don't want to go down there. You know, that's just. You know, he's just running people through there like cattle and making money off of them." Well, let me tell you. It made a huge difference for me, a huge difference. And I am grateful that I didn't listen to the doctors up here that discouraged me and told me not to go down there. I am so grateful that I went, and I'm telling, and if anybody that's listening to this radio program, God provides answers. If you have faith and you look, he will provide you an answer, just like he did for me. And you're listening to this radio program for a reason, Mm -hmm. because there is hope for you. And... Dr. Bernardi isn't God. He can't do everything. But he at least gives you an opportunity to find an answer that could possibly be the answer for you. And it definitely was for me, and it has been for a lot, a lot of people. And you owe it to yourself to at least try and go check it out and see if it can help you. Well can, can I just ask one quick question? I know sure. we're getting ready to wrap, but during the surgery, do you remember interacting with Dr. Bernardi? Oh, absolutely. Uh, We talked. We even told jokes and laughed. We had a great time (laughs) during the surgery. Yes. See, so even though when somebody tells you, a doctor tells you there is no hope, you're going to be stuck on painkillers, that isn't true. So keep searching and bless you, uh, Charlene. Absolutely. Great story. You know, continued good health. Please keep us informed. And if you take more pictures, send them our way. Thanks, Charlene. Awesome. Don't get more accidents. No more oh, accidents. Yeah. No I more. do not intend to have any more. <laughs> all right. Have a great day, Charlene. You take care. All right. Thank you so much. You, Thank all of you, you very much. You Thank you, beautiful. Bye-bye. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Wow. Those, those are the heartfelt up. stories. <laughs> Doc's you know, getting emotional. Everybody. It's true. We've had so many people that were contemplating suicide. I know. And it. I could just imagine these people, you would see their names in an obituary instead of talking to them as a testimonial, and it chokes me up every time. Mm -hmm. Um, That about wraps up this break. Um, Coming up, we're going to speak to Wendy Kelly, founder of Positive Life Foundation, a nonprofit that has dogs that seek out cancer. Make sure you stay tuned. You're listening to American Medicine today. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain-free after 18 years, and it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone, nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now, I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. 
Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done, and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I am feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs>
Well, those two I fired. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor, yeah. As you should have. Exactly. Nothing like Dr. Bernardi. Yeah. He would have immediately believed Oh, yeah. yeah. He totally would have said, is it a poodle? You. Is it a poodle? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. We'll still believe it. <laughs> so what happened? I mean, obviously, you're so, still standing here in front yeah, of us. So. Yeah, I, yeah, I went through treatment. I um, had a great oncologist. I battled it, and and it, I, I kind of embraced it in, in a way to see, I think, anything that happens to us um, is a message right. and so I wasn't really listening and it really got me to stop and listen mm. and to be in the present moment got which it. is a little bit of what the book is about it's a little bit mm. of autobiography about that story but right. it's about seven life lessons we learn in relationship to our pets yeah well it's interesting yeah. because on last week's show we had mm -hmm. Kevin Rose on from the Catalyst Refuge yes. and he sort of talked about kind of the same thing that mm -hmm. animals are people don't intuitive. give them credit for being right. so oh. intuitive yes. and, and and knowing what's going on so mm -hmm. now you with positive life you actually train other rescue dogs to sniff out cancer how do you yeah. do that yes yes well actually a dog's sense of smell is so much more sophisticated than ours mm -hmm. they can detect um, chemical traces of cancer in parts per trillion Wow. which would be equivalent to smelling a drop of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Ooh. Now, are we able to show what you showed us in studio a few minutes Absolutely. ago? Absolutely. Well, Why let don't me, you let me, that up? Let, sure. me, let, me, let me talk a little bit about this. Sure. It's not, it's not unusual. This. Remember that the animals, uh, they abandon the wounded animals or the sick animals in the field. Mm. When, you, when, you, when you are in uh, the animals that they are on the on the um, forest or the they abandon in the wild, mm -hmm. they abandon the animals that they are sick. So probably is in their, in their main mm -hmm. how to be able to detect these things. So what you discovered is not only e incredible, but at the same time, I really think can be extremely helpful in being used. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Six months before. Now just imagine if those doctors I had listened you. to you. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. That's but, incredible. And that's and that's the application of it in yeah. the medical field. We don't think anything about using dogs and police. Yeah, sniffing out drugs. Seizures, and, drugs. Yeah. Why would we use them in the medical field? Well, right? it's yeah. because it's, the next, it's status quo and, you know, yeah. people are skeptical and things well, like sure. that. But Here's something. Is this something you think will be covered as far as screening for cancers moving forth? That is my ultimate life goal right. is for these these tubes, these tests to be available at any pharmacy, um, any doctor's office, you go and and go for your annual checkup. Right. They check your blood, urine. Why not a breath sample? Well, we only have a couple right. minutes yeah. left. Yeah. So you open it? your briefcase, Absolutely. show, uh, hold up to the camera for those watching the stream and watching on TV yeah. what these uh, tests are. Now, did you develop these, Wendy? No, I actually had the good fortune of having a brilliant uh, researcher, mm. inventor, um, oh. Dr. Rick Williams, hmm. who uh, st stayed with us, and actually, this is like the last final. Can you see it? The, yep. the last so, final yes. prototype mm -hmm. before it goes to, to mass production. Wow. Yeah. wow. Unbelievable. And now is he a, a local guy, a local He's doctor? He's a local guy, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, show, awesome. Show us how that thing works. Yeah. Okay. And explain. Sure. Actually, you would go to your doctor. You're just going to breathe into this tube okay. for 30 seconds. We seal it up. This comes off. It gets. There you go. This part comes off. Right. It's, it's a little, for those just listening, yeah. it's a little cylindrical uh, plastic tube. It's you breathe into the one tube. thing, it goes into the other to seal it up. Your mm -hmm. breath is inside. Your breath is inside. And you send it tested. off. Send it off. And then it's it's screened by a cancer detection dog. Wow. wow. Yeah. And they'll. Yeah, I mean, it's remarkable. And and you were telling us off air, but actually before we started, and what is the uh, accuracy rate on some of these? It's eighty eight percent um, for breast cancer, ninety nine percent for lung. Wow! And, we just oh my started... and how you how you how you? I mean, once the dog the dog smells it, then what happened? Uh, once the dog smells it, then we get a separate dog and a separate test. We act, we actually ask for two samples. Second opinion. Okay. And it's actually <laughs> on a scent, scent um, tray along with can with breath samples that are non-cancerous. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So if it gets hits on two times, then we're going to ask for for another sample or contact the patient and the doctor to let them know they need to go further. Yeah, right. the, the, what the dog does to to be able mm. to know this oh. is this is cancer or is not. We train them to sit, or they'll, oh. they'll dig at that spot, All right. or they'll put their nose on. 
Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand. All I'm right. Well, we appreciate you joining oh, us, Wendy. So and when that goes to market, maybe we'll have you back yes, on and please. talk about it. I would love it. that. I would love yeah. that. that. Thank would you be so really much. Cool. And what is your uh, website you. and the name of the book again? It's cancerstinks.com. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and the book is Bougie and Me, Seven wow. Lessons from the Dog Who Rescued Me. Amazon. Amazon.com. Like Amazon. Yeah. Any major bookstore or pet store. Perfect. Wendy oh, Kelly right. with the uh, Positive Life Foundation nonprofit in Pinellas Park Training. Rescued Dogs to Sniff Out Cancer. Uh, commendable work, Thank and you. we appreciate you, you joining us on American Medicine today. Okay? Thank you very much. Thanks. And I have, as soon as I have my new poodles, I'll call you. Oh, please do. <laughs> you train minds before the so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I love Aww. them. Right. Well, Thanks. you're listening to American Medicine today. If you or someone you know is suffering with neck, back, or sciatic pain, make sure you watch. Um, Watch or reach out. Reach, reach out. out to the Bonatti yeah. Spine Institute, 855-267-0482, or visit Bonatti.com. Well, coming up, we're going to speak with Dr. Gerard Mullen, a leading gastroenterologist with John Hopsk- Hopkins, to discuss his book, The Gut Balance Revolution, Boosting Your Metabolism, Restoring Your Inner Ecology, and Lose the Weight for Good. So make sure you stay tuned. You're listening to American Medicine Today. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain-free after 18 years, and it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone, nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already, I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now, I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done, and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. You're listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer, Ethan Euchre. I am here as always. Friend and senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Hey, Kimberly. Hey. Glad to be here. <laughs> and we have world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. Always here. Yes, yes, you are. <laughs> and on the line, we're here with Dr. Gerard Mullen, a leading gastroenterologist and associate professor of medicine at Johns Hopkins University. Mm-hmm. He's also the author of The Gut Balance Revolution, Boost Your Inner Metabolism, Restore Your Inner Ecology, and Lose the Weight for Good. So I like the sounds of that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Mullen. 
My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, I think, Dr. Mullen, that your average high school student knows and is aware of the fact that we have millions, if not billions, of little bacteria and things like that in Microorganisms. our... Microorganisms. Yeah, yeah. In, our, in our GI. But, you know, mm-hmm. kind of what I didn't know is that what they are and really what they do. We know they're there, yeah. but can you explain what uh, the microbiome is in the gut? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's trillions of these organisms that until about five years ago, uh, we all thought that there were maybe a few hundred different, let's say, species or types in there. Mm-hmm. Now we're finding mm-hmm. that there are 500 to 1,000 or more different types of bacteria due to the emergence of technologies. Mm-hmm. And what we're finding is, you know, thankfully, the technologies now allow us to do metabolomic studies, and we're finding that these bacteria really control us. They control our mood, our thoughts, behavior, our appetite, emotions, but also metabolism, mm-hmm. right? So you, you've, you've met people over the years who say, mm-hmm. no matter how little I eat, I gain weight. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, you know, we're finding is that they're, the people who do that, it's because that they really have a very, let's say, disrupted ecology inside their gut. It's really fascinating. Mm. What I want to know is what throws off these bacteria, is it? And I think a lot of it probably has medicines? to do with, well, I'm, I'm sure probably medicines, right, mm-hmm. doctor? Um, I'm also thinking the American diet and just a lot of the garbage that we eat. Yeah. Processed foods. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, there's been many studies GMOs. showing that what they call the Western diet, mm-hmm. and uh, which is the American diet, which is very inflammatory fats, sugary foods, you know, refined flours. All those things do disrupt the gut ecology but also antibiotics. Yes. And Mm -hmm. the studies are linking antibiotic use in, in, you know, in childhood to obesity later on. Really? Yeah. In fact, that the scientists at NYU found that the amount of antibiotics in just red meat is enough to Mm -hmm. induce obesity in mice. Unbelievable. Now, what happens if you are on medicine? I had always heard it was a good thing if you're on antibiotics Mm -hmm. to go take probiotics because it helps to increase um, those good bacteria? Well, you know, the, the, the problem with, uh, you know, probiotics, as mm-hmm. they said in Forrest Gump, it's like a box of chocolates. You just don't know what you're <laughs> going to get. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the Consumer Report study showed that out of 25 brands tested, mm-hmm. only eight had the actual number of species that were on the label. Oh, so, really? Yeah, kind of like the yeah. vitamins that we just heard about in the news. Yeah. Wow. The supplements. Well, yeah, there, there's problems there. There's problems there. But also you're kind of aimlessly throwing bacteria in there hoping that some will stick and the ones that stick will actually do something. Hmm. So you're going to get some effect. Okay. Um, but your best bet is by cultured foods, fermented foods, okay. the kefirs and the yogurt they talk about in the book, mm-hmm. even the, the forgotten sauerkraut. And I see pickles. avocado. Mm. Well, avocado, yeah, avocado is, is, is very good for you, but it doesn't have the live bacteria. Oh, okay. Um, but it's got anti-inflammatory fats. Got it. Uh, you, you said something about the probiotics, and, and you said that there are around eight that they have, the, the, the correct ones. They're correct ones. Why don't you mm-hmm. use, uh, why don't you tell us the names of those ones? Yeah, what are they? Well, the ones that are good? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there are, unfortunately, you know, Sometimes you got to pay for the better brands, and mm-hmm. such as the Culturels and the VSL3s are out on the market and align, and you see the commercials with them. Those have pharmaceutical grade, and they actually have been tested and, and carry the GMP labeling. Okay. So that's your best bet, but even then, you know, VSL3 has probably the best mix because it's got nine different bacteria in them. Um, Others have maybe one or two. So, you know, again, it's kind of, it's a chancy situation um, with with the probiotics. I favor food. You know, food is medicine. Mm -hmm. Correct. Dr. Mullen, you also you also said about the red meat has a problem. How about the white meat? Chicken, You know, the problem, uh, something you're seeing in the news is the fact that... uh, you know, certain vendors like Costco and McDonald's mm-hmm. and, and so on and so forth are now saying they're going to have their chickens raised without antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because now there's a lot in the news about superbugs and the Obama administration is now uh, funding initiatives to cut down on antibiotic use in livestock. Is that even chicken, you know, white meat mm-hmm. has 
raised on antibiotics. And that's, mm-hmm. the, you know, the same thing with the red meat. And also GMOs are a factor, though, how they're growing the food. So when you're, you're talking about um, getting foods that are, how did you say that? Were they, uh, were they more... I'm, I'm forgetting the word you had said here, the more organic, mm-hmm. if that's the correct phraseology. But I know we've we've interviewed people that talk about GMOs and how it's affecting the food. Well, what happens with the GMOs, it's the, it's the you know, the pesticide, mm-hmm. which really was designed to clean, you know, clean out cans, believe it or not. So it was really developed to be a cleaner. Right. Huh. And then it was found to really kill everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you develop, if you put a gene in, in the plant, that, that'll actually resist that effect by the herbicide. Mm. The, the actual plant will survive, but all the weeds will get killed. But unfortunately, when you consume the plant, like corn, mm-hmm. you're going to get a residual of that, that uh, pesticide in mm-hmm. it. And in mm-hmm. experimental animals, they found that there's enough in there to cause intestinal disruption to the GI lining, mm-hmm. well, even a celiac-like syndrome. I, I had a so, good question. So if we cannot eat white meat or red meat, um, what can we eat? Then what we can eat? <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you what a, antibiotic free. Okay. Yeah, but how how can white. you how can you buy or get that type of product? Well, there are like, if you go to certain stores, we'll okay. have uh, antibiotic free red meat, and you could find it in. Many of your grocery stores. Well, it's like, I'm just right. wondering it's, if you could trust okay. the label, though, because if others yeah. are pretending that they have um, certain probiotics or certain vitamins and, and minerals and things, and we're finding out that it's that it's don't. false labeling. How can we trust? Um, but the other thing I wanted to find out with these foods: does it matter how you cook them, how you prepare them? Should you eat them mm-hmm. raw? Um, do you lose any of those nutrients that you're needing um, if you cook them? Well, in terms of the weight loss, it may not really influence okay. the way you cook them. I tend in general, okay. as nutritionists, tell people if they're going to fry something, keep it below the smoking point because it'll turn the oils into very pro-inflammatory oils, even Ooh. if they were very anti-inflammatory oils, right, sure. when you go above the smoking point. Okay. Steam your vegetables whenever mm-hmm. possible to preserve the nutrient content. Those are the kind of the the two tips, but, you know, the raw thing, you know, you have a lot of people that I see who have gut issues and they don't do very well with raw foods. You know, you got to keep things in moderation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mullen is a 50 year old male who over the last 10 years worked out as a kid, but I've really tried to get healthy and work out. As I look at some of the foods you suggest, just being honest, I don't even know what some of them are, but the one thing that jumped out at me was whey protein. Is that the protein that we use after we work out? Does that have beneficial properties? The two things about whey protein I like best because it can be considered a superfood is it boosts your intestinal immunity and it also diminishes appetite, right? So it's one of those proteins that'll do that. So if you work out, um, you know, to build muscle, A, you're going to be provided the protein, but two, it's going to, you know, curb your appetite, which is great for weight loss, right? Mm-hmm. And also it's going to boost your intestinal immune system and help your friendly microbes, right? That's what we're talking about today is those good gut microbes that are helping you lose weight. With the whey protein, though, if you're not working out and you're more sedentary, isn't that just going to cause you to gain weight? That's going to, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it cause Wouldn't you to... gain weight if you're not somebody that's overly active or if you don't have a workout regime? Well, I mean, the idea is to accrue muscle, so you okay. should work out Correct. any calories right. or, you know, you're going to certainly, if you're not mobile mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. overconsume, you definitely will gain weight. But, it's, okay. you know, you got to realize protein, unlike carbs, I mm-hmm. mean, it's probably the, the least of the three evils in that, that respect in terms of putting the weight on. But eventually, if you eat enough protein, it's going to be, you know, translated into, you know, glucose, and that'll certainly you know, put the weight on. So again, everything is in moderation. Well, when you when you have these these proteins also, uh, don't don't they have also antibiotics and hormones uh, before they 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 create this uh, product? You know, it's a very good question. Is that you know the USDA um, about three months ago reported that they they do their surveillance uh, and milk inspections, and they found that ninety percent of the 
the you know the the, the vendors that they had inspected were complying with their regulations about not having antibiotics in the milk. Right. So what about the other 10%? Exactly. Do Does they... that mean I have a 1 out of 10 chance of going to the store and picking up a milk cart and having antibiotics in it? Wow. Yeah, that's a good point. You hear what I'm saying, right? Yes. I mean, there's mm-hmm. people who are not compliant, and right. I wouldn't call that a good report card. If it was 95 to 99%, I would say they're doing pretty good, but... They not, need to yeah, do you're getting antibiotics in the milk, too. Not well, good enough. If, if they pull them from the shelves, I bet they they change their act. Yeah. They get and that's how out. to answer mm-hmm. your question. Yeah, it could be, you know, it could be in your whey protein. But again, you know, some people, you know, they label these from organic, which is obviously more expensive. Wow. Um, and that's mm-hmm. how you guarantee that you're getting antibiotic-free milk or dairy products. Well, thank you for joining us, Dr. Gerard Mullen, a leading gastroenterologist and associate professor of medicine at Johns Hopkins University and author of The Gut Balance Revolution, Boost Your Metabolism, Restore Your Inner Ecology, and Lose Weight for Good. Thanks for joining us. Great discussion. Thank you. Thank you, you, Doc. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. Ah. Good stuff. (sighs) You you know, it's like you're afraid to go shopping at the supermarket nowadays because you don't know what you're going to get. He's right. It's like a box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. So I want meat with full antibiotics. Oh, well, <laughs> Bring it on. We'll leave that all for you, sir. Um, you're listening to American Medicine Today. Make sure you check out our TV program on WFTS, ABC 28, Saturdays at 7. On Bloomberg, both Saturdays and Sundays. Check your local listings and tweet at Dr. Benati with hashtag American Medicine Today. Um, well, we have uh, what's new in medicine today. <laughs> what's new today? in American Medicine Today. Make sure you stay tuned. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone, nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now, I can garden, I can cook, and I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail.
You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. You're continuing to listen to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our executive radio producer, Ethan Euchre. Always a pleasure. Jeff Wagstaff, our senior fellow. Present. And that man over there is world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. I'm here. Ah. (laughs) Well, not only are you here, but you're going to discuss... Let's look at what's new in medicine today, featuring Alfred Bonatti, MD. It's all you. All you, Doc. (laughs) (laughs) So was this a discussion you wanted to continue about the AMA? Uh, No, I, I, I really think that we need to... We need to analyze the disaster that Obama created to oh, medicine. Wow. It's not only an irresponsible type of mm-hmm. a behavior. Uh, his, his policies are not only damaging the country in everything he touched, yes. but at the same time, they did so much damage to the American medicine. Uh, we're talking a long time ago, uh, that the premiums and, and the cost of the health care was, was too high. Correct. Well, eight years ago, it was around $580 uh, per month. Okay. Today is $1,400 for the same type of a coverage. Who, who can afford that nowadays in this well, economy? The major problem is they don't care. Less right. Coverage. Because this coverage is being forced by law. Right. Before you have the opportunity to say no. Right. And don't don't elect your insurance. Correct. So or negotiate for better insurance. I, I'm thinking this should have been a Brock's croc <laughs> segment because, you know, it, it's quite the croc that he's making these comments about the Supreme Court in their upcoming ruling. Mm-hmm. Um, saying, how dare they insert themselves into medicine? Well, how dare he insert himself I into love, medicine? I love how uh, President Obama's backup plan was not having a backup plan. Yeah. And when he was called out by reporters, he pretty much admitted that. He right. said, the, the reporter said, why don't you have a plan B? Why oh, he don't does you have lie. A, and he, Continue the lies. And he just, he just said, I don't have one because this shouldn't be repealed to begin with. So why have a backup plan was well, essentially right. what he said. But this this man, all his, all his life was an agitator. Mm -hmm. Uh, He never worked on his life one day. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what means to drive or to manage a business. No, he's just a community organizer. Organizer. Mm -hmm. Well, just create the same thing that these uh, these agitators that we have right now against the police. They create a lot of noise, Mm -hmm. but really they don't measure the consequence of what they do. You know, he was a community organizer, so somehow he must have organized his community. But he is he's ripping apart communities all throughout the United States. He's causing friction between the races. Mm-hmm. He's causing friction between the uh, the classes. Class the warfare. Inco- yes. Mm-hmm. And um, everything's a handout. It, it's the destruction of America. And it's Socialism. all wrapped up into Obama, Obamacare. And then the darn AMA backs him 17 percent they pretend that the representative of all the other surgeons that are out there but ama is is on their on the pocket of the insurance company yes ama is supposed to represent the physicians the medicine and protect doctors and hospitals right. to to be able to deliver good health care to the nation correct well uh they kind of do that when they are a group that is in bed with insurance companies. Right. So they make more money with selling insurance than protecting the constituency. Mm-hmm. So the the situation here is corruption after corruption. And at the same time, the leaders are not leaders. They are individuals that they shoot from the hip. Right. And then when, when the bullet goes on their own foot, they don't. They say, "Oh, boo, I didn't have an, 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 an additional plan to correct this." You know, I, I'm just disgusted because Obama really—they play the race card all the time. I don't care if he was a 
uh, one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. I <laughs> wouldn't care. Cool, actually. But that ha- <laughs> race has nothing to do with it. But when you consistently lie, you're consistently clueless or um, conveniently ignorant to the things that are going on in your administration and to your own laws. Mm-hmm. At what point do the American c- citizens finally stand up and go, you are out of there. Get out. Well, it's probably never going to happen, even though his approval rating is so bad. The stench surrounding that administration. The problem is the problem is the 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 country elect a black president, and this becomes like a like an issue because it's because he's a black president. You can't oppose him. Nobody nobody wants to touch him. He's beyond reproach. Yes, just because because you're a racist. No, not because they're racist. It's just only because this individual represent a group of society. And, and and they feel they, they want to live and die by they want, that decision. They want to pro- they want to protect the image uh, right. of what they did. But the problem is they need to protect the United States first. Yeah. And uh, well, and what I what I was saying, Doc, is that yeah. it's not that the people are racist. I'm saying no. anyone who speaks out against the president yeah, and his they, policies correct. are called racist. Yes. Oh well, serious. you just yes. don't like him because he's black. Yes. No, I don't like his stupid policies. Exactly. That's that's what yeah. it is. Fact. It has nothing yeah. to do with that. Mm-hmm. You're right. You know. Yeah. Well, well, we ha- we have to be realistic, though. The country got caught up in the Obama hoopla, mm-hmm. and the reality is, the country elected a man who organized basketball leagues to be the president. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's a little scary. And we he's not have even to very, wake up. He's, he's not, not even very good. good at basketball if you've ever watched him play. <laughs> well, the, the 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 major problem is that the, the healthcare is in shambles, and the people who is uh, now receiving a healthcare. They have two problems. And one of the problems is if you don't have health care, you are going to be punished with the law. Right. Uh, then, then uh, all this thing needs to be repealed. This is this is garbage. They cannot force the people to buy something that you don't want. Correct. That's, that's illegal. And at the same time, if you buy. Why is now three times more expensive when they told us it's going to be three times less expensive? Mm-hmm. All right. right. And all these lies and lies And they knew lies. it was a lie. They knew it was a lie when it was happening. Mm-hmm. But they kept pushing because they knew if people knew the reality of it, they would never have approved it. Correct. And that's a look at what's new in medicine today with Alfred Benatti, MD. Mm. And, of course, the talks about Obamacare could continue, continue. They will yeah. continue. Yeah. Well, that about wraps it up for today. You're mm-hmm. listening to American Medicine Today. Um, if you or someone you know really needs to be participating in life, regaining their strength and getting back in motion, don't let other doctors out there lose hope for you. There is hope. There is a solution. And those are the targeted Bonatti spine procedures. Um, they can help with neck, back, or sciatic pain. Reach out to them at Bonatti.com or 855-267-0482. Check us out on Bloomberg as well as on ABC WFTS here in Tampa.